sea is a, is a peace for me. It's quiet. But to be a captain is a big, big responsibility. We should deal with it, even with the, knowing that we have a navy on board. She didn't want to stop. I like the sea. Toy boats floating along in the shallow water off the Mozambican coast. Youngsters dreaming of adventure. Some imagine catching fish like their fathers with nets. Others may fantasize about landing more exotic creatures. Those with bigger imaginations dream of going further a sea as captains exploring new lands. One man lived almost all of these dreams. I started fishing when, when I was young. So uh, I, I, I think I won for the sea. As a young boy, Noah jumped splashed and swam on this quiet beach in his hometown of Imnyambani like any other boy. He watched fishermen go out to ply their trade and return usually with plenty to show for their efforts. He also visited nearby Tofo Beach where tourists, mostly Europeans and South Africans, came to relax and enjoy Mozambique's easygoing atmosphere. The sea is a, is a peace for me. It's quiet. I, see, I, I, I like to, to, to see the animals, the dolphins, the, the gongos, fish. I like the sea. Perhaps he had a little too much fun in the water. His family sent him to the Cambini Catholic School to fill him with knowledge and discipline. I did my secondary school in Cambini Secondary School, uh, where the discipline was too, 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 too hard. We used to, to wake up every day at 4 o'clock, went to, to farm. For, 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 for us, that time it was difficult. We were very young, but uh, now I understand that it was very good for us. It was very helpful. Uh, all of my colleagues who went to the same school, now they are uh, successful professionals. He was a good student and learned the basics. but he also learned to endure solitude, to exercise some leadership, and he would eventually put these lessons to use in his advanced education and his career. I went to Russia in 1992. The government uh, sent me for scholarship, so we didn't have uh, so many choice. Russia was a whole new world. Yes, there were Africans for all over Africa. Yes, all over. Not only Africans, but even for uh, Asia, uh, Latin America. Yeah, so there was a lot of uh, people. And the only, only language to communicate was Russian. The time I was there, the people were very good. Nice people at the time. I don't know about now. Eh? Uh, it was uh, friendly, quite big difference. Uh, Russia is, uh, well, it's 
uh, too cold, especially in Murna Square where, where I was. Even this, uh, some Russian, Russian people did not like to stay in, in Murna Square because it's uh, always cold. Yeah, the light, light is not enough. Ten years in all, and he learned to speak fluent Russian. It was for me very difficult because... The Murmansk State Marine Academy gave him a chance to earn degrees in deck and engine management. Among the disciplines he trained in were bridge team management, automatic radar plotting aids, oil tanker management, and carriage of dangerous and hazardous substances. but he didn't get a chance to try all of the local delicacies. Like caviar, the Russian fish egg delicacy that can cost $10,000 per kilogram. I, I, I don't remember because it was very specific for us. So I, I, I don't say, I cannot say that uh, I remember uh, caviar. I saw caviar on TV, but <laughs> I, I, we didn't have money enough to, to buy caviar. And this gave him the opportunity to have some memorable experiences and see some exotic lands. His decade of training qualified him to take charge of a boat right out of school. So he dived right in, so to speak, being put in charge of a craft that had just been purchased by a Mozambican company. That took him past European shores, all the way down the Atlantic coast of Africa and around Cape Horn to Maputo. Becoming a captain seemed to be his destiny. Well, to be a captain is a big, big responsibility. You have to take um, a good decision to, 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 to save the vessel, to save the people. The biggest boat he captained was a 35-metre fishing boat with 24 people aboard. But he also helmed cargo boats, transport ships and tankers. And it led to adventures both humorous and dangerous. He had a close call sailing from Cape Town in South Africa back home. Then during the trip, I lost the power and the, 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 the vessel started taking water inside. And we were only four, four of us. I called for assistance. They come from a helicopter from South African uh, maritime authorities and it was, it was a very strong wind. They couldn't help me. So I continued sailing, uh, taking water from uh, using the, 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 the uh, basket. After delivering the boat safely into Maputo, another crew took it out to sea just days later. Three, three days later, we came to, to, to Durban. And I saw in the newspaper that the vessel was sunk and the people disappeared. So it was very, very, very uh, terrible for me. Noah's time captaining ships gave him a broad knowledge of the vessels that sailed the Mozambican waters. He was chosen to be responsible for over 20 boats in an eight-year span. His friends and colleagues considered him an expert at finding rich fishing areas. Fishing has not only been important to Noah's career, it is an important industry for so many Mozambicans. According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, around 100,000 Mozambicans are directly employed in this sector. The economic, the economic effect to have a well-functioning fishing industry is used to the country. 
So I think that it's a sector that should be seen as a priority in order to, 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 to fulfill its past, its past contribution to the country. And Mozambicans like to eat fish. Two thirds of Mozambican people are living around the coast. And uh, Mozambican uh, eat fish. According to some uh, FA, FAO data, uh, we have to eat 18 kilograms per year. Uh, Mozambique is uh, al almost over 9 kilo kilograms per year per person. Other countries are much, much down. So we are a little bit in front on the fishing consumption. In Maputo, fishermen used to go out in the middle of the night and fish for 12 to 16 hours at a time. Now they go out in the morning complaining about what a struggle it is to make a living. They work hard to keep their nets in good shape. They spend long, tedious hours at sea. and often come back with a meager haul. One threat to fishermen's livelihoods is illegal fishing. From industrial fishers coming too close to the shoreline to artisanal fishermen using mosquito nets so young fish can't escape, fish have been scooped up without regard to the future. A 2012 report for the United Nations noted that the degradation of key habitats were happening due to dynamite fishing and the use of mosquito nets. The report also said it is difficult to see how the specter of too many fishes, too few fish can be avoided in this region. Some people are doing illegal fishing because their salary is depending on how much tons they bring to the company. You don't pay the, you don't pay the, 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 the license. The illegal fishermen, they, they never report what they catch in, the, in, some, in certain areas. Consequently, for the fisheries administration, they don't have data for, for, for management of the, of the resource. There's a difference between what you consider like industrial, industri industrial fisheries, artisanal fishing, and semi-industrial fishing. We're still facing problems on that. Yet, we are, for instance, I'm going to tell you, for instance, for us as industrials, for the industrials, they are not allowed to fish before three miles. So in the resources like prawns, for instance, that is giving the, the industrial, the industrial, the industrial, the, the industrial settle, I mean, a huge problems. When certain species are caught, it can be bad for Mozambique's thriving tourism industry. Tourists come to see specific fish. On the winter, most of the time to see a humpback was. I know some countries doesn't have any sea. When they come here and they find the sea, our beautiful sea with the waves, they just want to experience, to see those manta rays, seven meters manta rays, dolphins, turtles, because our sea, it does have pretty much everything. Not all, but most of the things that people that really want to see in the dive. By 2007, Mozambique was seeing a dangerous drop in the number of fish being caught. A 2006 United Nations report by the Southwest Indian Ocean Fisheries Commission claimed that only 25% of the fish stocks in the region were underexploited and most species were considered fully or overexploited. 
something needed to be done. It was about this time that Noah decided to stop answering the call from many large boat owners to captain their craft and join the fisheries ministry. Due to his long experience at sea, he soon became the head of the Mozambique Fisheries Ministry Surveillance Department. While he was with the government, he got interested in using technology to aid his efforts. The Vessel Monitoring System, or VMS, allows law enforcement to identify ships, their flags, their size, their purpose, and whether they are licensed to operate in Mozambique's territorial waters. VMS is a device uh, which is uh, fixed in your vessel, and this, this device is communicating with the satellite. Uh, from the satellite, the information goes to the some uh, uh, monitoring center somewhere. So I can see the, all vessels in our, in our zone in real time. Mozambique and territorial waters are split into two zones. Zero to three miles out is for artisanal fishermen. Three miles and beyond is for industrial fishing vessels. Before VMS, uh, it was a, a dispute, dispute between fishermen. Sometimes the big vessel come inside three miles, and the small one are complaining. And sometimes small one go to uh, outside, and the big vessel cut their, their nets. But now with VMS, we can control. If I see uh, the vessel, big vessel in, uh, in, uh, within three, three miles on, he will be penalized. So, this, this, that kind of conflicts are not anymore existing because of the VMS. VMS was just beginning to be used in North America by 2015. So Noah and his African counterparts have been on the technological cutting edge for almost a decade. Noah also worked hard to build trust and cooperation with his neighbors. South Africa, Madagascar, Seychelles, Mauritius and Tanzania all work together with Mozambique to monitor the vast area they all border. Joint patrols were organized. Communication was streamlined despite some language differences. In the last uh, five, seven years, are you fishing in, in, in this area? Uh, I can say is completely down, yeah, because we have very good uh, communication with us uh, between us. If someone see, uh, if uh, some patrol vessel, let's say from Madagascar, see a strange vessel, they they they, they could call me and ask me, listen, Noah, I see here a vessel with this plate number. Do you know this vessel is uh, have license from Mozambique? Then you go in my, my database, database, I check. I said, no, no, this vessel I don't know. We can confiscate them. Local fishermen were organized to report illegal activity. Nós não fizemos nada, só metemos a queixa na associação, a associação é que resolve. O nosso desejo para eles não aparecer é só a associação tentar resolver esse assunto. And the final weapon in Noah's arsenal against illegal fishing was patrol boats. Uh, she was fishing without the license. So we we send the at that time we had a, very, a small a small patrol vessel, 27 meters. Stand up. No, 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 one peep, one peep. Stand up. Yeah? Come in. Turn around. We send the vessel outside. We confiscate the vessel being here. Yeah. Uh, we fired him. Four million US dollars. He didn't pay the fine. And uh, we confiscate the vessel, the, 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 the fish, and we send back the crew. But the job was not without its perils. 
This caused Noah to enlist protection from Mozambique's Navy and police force. All our surveillance uh, activities, we are working together closely with the, with the, with the Navy and sometimes with the Martin police. Why? Because sometimes uh, they, they have to, to protect us. Sometimes police has, has to, 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 to use arms to, to protect the inspectors. Still, there is drama. I had uh, that kind of situation some years ago. We stopped at one Asian vessel. He didn't want to stop. We shoot. He didn't want to, to, to even with the, knowing that we have a navy on board. He didn't want to stop. So it's uh, sometimes it's danger. But Noah feels it was worth the risks and he is proud of his achievements with the fisheries ministry. I feel proud because uh, before we start implementing the VMS, before we had our patrol vessel, uh, it was common to, 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 to have information from, uh, even from our local fishermen, saying that in, in, in the night time, we see huge of vessels, big vessels, coming inside our waters and during the day, they go out. So that was uh, embarrassing us. It was very bad for us. But since we started implementing the VMS, since we, we started operating our patrol vessel, uh, that kind of information, uh, I can say zero. While he is quick to credit the VMS system for his success, Noah also praises other technology that has improved safety and performance at sea. In the fishing vessels, we have uh, several kinds of uh, technologies. Uh, we have different kinds of vessels. We have vessels for, 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 for we have trawlers, we have uh, long liners. So each vessel uses different technology. For example, in the uh, trawl fisheries, uh, they use mostly uh, trawls. They use uh, echo sounders, uh, they use uh, sonars, and for long liners we, we use different other kinds of uh, technologies. But in the, in the end of the day, all fishermen, they use technology. Noah has had his share of long absences from home. Sim, nessa altura já era marinheiro e, e viajava muito para onde não, não cheguei a saber, porque ainda era muito, ainda era muito novo. Uh, mas eu sei que ele passava muito tempo, às vezes seis meses, e a minha, <risos> a minha, a minha irmã reclamava, reclamava por isso. His wife, Monica, has stuck by his side, although it hasn't always been easy. Posso falar em português, né? É. Yeah. Um... É o trabalho que ele já teve que um bocado difícil, né? Foi difícil para mim. It was love at first sight after being introduced by friends. After meeting her just once, Noah took advantage of a break at school in Russia to rush home and tie the knot. He praises her as a great cook. And what does he like to eat? I like fish. I, I, I used to eat, to eat fish at least four days per, 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 per week. The marriage has given him three daughters. His second daughter, Isla, wants to see the world much like her father. And some of the adventures she craves involve the sea. I would like to sail over an, an ocean, yes, and see dolphins. Uh, Office, yes. His eldest, Sheila, hopes to join Noah at his current company when she graduates. She has been studying public administration. Sheila would not be likely to get a position as a captain like her father in today's Mozambique. 
Well, here in Mozambique, we don't have women in the vessels. But when I was schooling in uh, Europe, we had uh, women on, on, in the vessels. Even now in South Africa, they, they do have women in, in the vessels. But here, uh, you know, our maritime schools, I can say, say that they, they, they are not uh, full operating now. They are not full training people. That's why if they was, they was continuing to, to train, I believe we should have not uh, women captains. She admires his abilities as a manager. Uh, he knows how to pass. <laughs> he knows how to pass and uh, with his colleagues, he, he has a good uh, relation. So I think uh, we could have a good relation too. See, see. His daughters all say he has traveled too much and they're happy that his current job keeps him home most of the time. They appreciate how he has tried to instill very important values in them. He, he te teaches, uh, but uh, we must work to, if we want something, we must work because the things doesn't come easy or free. <laughs> so <laughs> he, he is a good worker, he, he works hard. Noah is now an executive with Ematum, a government-owned company that has acquired funding for a very big fishing project. They plan to catch tuna and have purchased many new vessels. They turn to Noah to organize the project because of his vast experience on land as well as at sea. Uh, well, uh, I'm, this, I'm working in this position because uh, I have experience at sea. I have experience as a uh, manager. I was working as a uh, surveillance manager, as surveillance head of the department. Uh, so I know uh, all the, 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 the situation happening at sea. I know the situation happening uh, in land. So this combination of knowledge helps me to, 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 to be in this position. As he looks off into the immensity of the sea, he often feels a tug at his heart. beckoning him to more adventures over the oceans. His name, Noah, like the biblical character who filled an ark, seems to indicate his calling. For now, Noah will keep his feet on the ground, spending time with his family and helping others learn more about the seacoast that he loves to call home.